Today we're going to talk about how to turn a cardboard box like this one into useful biochar for your garden. Before we begin we just need to talk really quick about processing cardboard into an input material so it can be used for recycling purposes and in this case for producing charcoal. Basically to break down a cardboard box what I do is I break it into slices by ripping it or cutting it with a, with a uh, jigsaw. Then I run it through a cross cut paper shredder to get a nice input material, which I'll show you an example of right now. This is an example of the cardboard material that's been processed with a cross-cut paper shredder. It will be the input material for our charcoal production process. I'm about to show you how to make charcoal with this type of cardboard, producing very little smoke, and I do it right in town. Let's get started. In order to produce charcoal without producing a lot of smoke, you're going to need some special equipment. Next to me, I have a tea lud stove that I've created. It's a top lit updraft stove and the way this works is by limiting the air intake at the bottom and allowing a lot of air intake at the concentrated wood gas uh, chimney the pyrolysis will take place down through the bucket creating charcoal and as the all of the smoke and the gas that's coming off of that process takes place it will ignite when it encounters oxygen higher up the chimney so this allows all of the smoke to be burned off prior to exiting the chimney or most of the smoke. Now when the uh, pyrolysis process reaches the bottom of the stove, what will happen is the burning will start to work its way bottom up. And at that point you'll start to see smoke come out of the chimney and it's a very easy way to know it's time to douse the charcoal so that you don't end up with just ash. After I show you how this works, I'll explain briefly how you can create one of these on your own. Here are all the components to start the burn. I've got the uh, apparatus there. I put a little grate on the ground to provide ventilation from the bottom. I'll show you again those holes in the bottom in a moment. A little bit of cardboard which isn't loaded up, a lighter, and I should say safety first. We need this water hose not only in case something goes awry, but also to start the dousing process once the pyrolysis is complete. I'm going to place the bucket now on the grate. We want to make sure it's relatively level and very secure. It's important not to pack the cardboard because airflow is critical for this to be successful. It does need to be filled close to the top. You can add probably a little bit more. I'm going to put a, just a drop or two of kerosene on top to get things going without any issue. If you want to, you could also go ahead with some newspaper or something like that um, and it would just produce a little bit of smoke as this process warms up. Okay. So I've added just a little bit of kerosene on the top there, maybe a little more than I intended, but it won't matter. I will position the camera and show you the process of igniting this, and you can observe that there will be very little smoke. We'll go through the entire process. I will douse it and show you the final result. Let's get started. One other important thing is remember to have some gloves. This gets extremely hot, and you may need to manipulate these items as we're going through it, as I'll show you here in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and start the light now. We'll ignite. Three, two, one, ignition. Kerosene is ignited. Right away, we'll put this lid on, secure it. A little bit of initial smoke here. Now you see the smoke building, so we're going to go ahead and put the second chimney. And in a couple of moments, the smoke at the top will begin to ignite with any luck. You can see now we're starting to get the uh, flames coming up almost through the chimney. The draw is improving. Now when you see a little bit of black char smoke coming out, that's typically when I'll add the longer chimney. Go ahead and add that now if I can. This can be challenging. Just gonna get there. We go. Should see virtually no smoke at this time, as all the smoke is burning up through the chimney. We're gonna let this run for a little bit, and I will be back. Okay, and now here we have a couple of time lapses of the burning process, just trying to show how little smoke is actually produced. Here's a close-up of the burning chamber, showing it light up as the pyrolysis process begins to come down to the bottom of the bucket. Panning up, you can see the smoke just starting to appear at the chimney, and that means our pyrolysis is done, and it's time to go ahead and douse the flames. We remove the chimney, 
and give it a nice drink of water, which will stop the pyrolysis reaction. Once the steam has stopped forming, we have nice charcoal left over. Let's take a look. And here you see the charcoal in the bucket, the final product, still steaming a little bit. I like to dump it into a larger container. You'll see a couple of little chunks that didn't burn completely, and that is perfectly fine. Assuming you're making biochar with this, those will just biodegrade. And from here, we would just soak it in a solution of uh, compost tea or even add it to your composter. And through that process, you'll create biochar. In order to create your own tea LUD stove, if you want to try this at home, you just need some basic parts you can pick up at any hardware store or maybe a junkyard if you're lucky. Uh, the first thing is some kind of a galvanized bucket. This one I was just measuring is about 14 inches across. And uh, as we move up the bucket, what we do is cut a hole around the edge and then um, create some fins. And then the fins are just riveted to the next component. And this piece is a reducer from eight inch to six inch, just an HVAC reducer with about, about quarter inch, half inch holes drilled all the way around. This is your kind of afterburner or this is your air intake for the wood gas. On top of that, I have a six inch, a little six inch chimney and uh, then another six inch to four inch reducer into the final chimney. Now I put another stack on top to further reduce the, uh, further reduce the gas coming off the top. And uh, with those components alone, you will be able to create this at home. One thing worth noting is that on the second intake, I've added a lot of little holes um, to maximize the airflow. Well, I hope this has been helpful. And uh, if you decide to do this at home, just be careful and uh, safety first. Thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next video.